Hello, I am Dr. Steve Johnson, and today I want to discuss the topic of addictions and the brain culture mismatch. The brain has one primary function, and that is our survival. There are two different mechanisms for survival. One is to quickly identify patterns of threat and discern the best methods for addressing the perceived threat, especially if it's perceived as overwhelming threat. And the second mechanism is to identify patterns of resources in the environment, such as healthy, energizing food or safe shelter, water, uh, safe, supportive individuals within our community. The brain in general does, you know, an adequate job helping humans survive. I mean, we're still here. However, the brain does make mistakes in identifying patterns of threat and patterns of resource. Why? Well, patterns of threat must be identified very quickly, often without clear environmental features of threat. So the brain acts upon what we might say is a hypothesis or a best guess of the presence of the threat. The brain also makes mistakes in identifying resources. So, for example, uh, pretty flowers similar to a safe edible plant may actually be, a, be poisonous or an individual may have facial features that are similar to ones uh, in one's community, and yet the individual actually may be a member of a hostile tribe and highly unsafe. Another reason the brain makes mistakes in identifying patterns of threat and resources for survival is that there is an ongoing and increasing mismatch between the rate at which the brain develops and the rate at which culture develops. The brain's evolving de development is slow compared to the rapid growth of culture that we experience. The brain continues today to identify patterns of threat but the contents of our current environment have radically changed. Instead of huge flesh-eating animals in our, you know, very near environment, uh, uh, instead of safety from unpredictable weather and unpredictable hostile tribes, um, our, environment, our environment now contains things like FICO scores or social media or lottery tickets or cybercrime and so forth. Thus, the brain can perceive a low FICO score as an overwhelming threat when it isn't a real threat uh, to survival at all. A bad response to a Facebook post can be perceived as a threat to survival when it clearly isn't such a threat. The same with resources. We now have within our environment lottery tickets and tanning beds and fast food that may appear to us as um, a resource when they may not be resources, especially over time. How is all of this related to the issue of addictions, whether we're talking about substance use addictions or process or behavioral addictions? The brain often misattributes something as a resource when it is actually a threat. When an individual experiences anxiety, for example, that the associated discomfort can be perceived as a threat to survival when it isn't really such a threat, it's just uncomfortable. In the presence of that discomfort, one can perceive, for example, a benzodiazepine as a resource, and it could be a temporary resource in terms of alleviating discomfort. However, as the addiction to the benzo increases and the dosage of the benzo increases to thinned off the perceived threat of discomfort, the temporary resource actually becomes an actual, very real threat to survival. It can cause death. The brain's mismatch yields ever greater falsely perceived threats and resources. And this contributes to, for example, eating unhealthy fast food as a resource or gambling to acquire perceived resource 
when it may be actually depleting our resources or connecting with unsafe individuals as if that individual is a resource. We see it in conspiracy theories and endless other deleterious consequences because of this mismatch between our slowly evolving brain and the quickly evolving culture in which we live. In another video, I will consider the solutions to the mismatch for better mental, emotional, and physical health. Thank you and have a great day.